everyone, welcome back to story time. Today our story time is all about mittens, and I promise you we are going to have a lot of fun. All right, first though, we've got to do our opening song. Does anyone remember our opening song? Do you remember the clapping part? What about how to say hello in sign language? Yeah, just like that. Okay, do you remember the I don't know gesture? I don't know. And when do we use this? When we sing, no matter what the weather. Okay, are we ready to do our opening song? Get those clapping hands ready. Okay, let's clap everybody and say hello. Clap everybody and say hello. Clap everybody and say hello, no matter what the weather. All right, what's something else that we can try this morning? Let's try flying. Now, if you want, you can fly when you're sitting or you can stand up and fly around the room. So we're gonna flap our wings like we're flying today. Fly everybody and say hello. Fly everybody and say hello. Fly everybody and say hello, no matter what the weather. Hmm, that got me thinking, what's something else that we can do? How about swimming? Do you guys like to swim? Oh, I'm so ready for summer and swimming. All right, so we are going to swim. Let's swim everybody and say hello. Swim everybody and say hello. Swim everybody and say hello, no matter what the weather. Very nice, everyone. All right, I am really anxious to get started with story time because this one, it's gonna be a ton of fun and it stars one of my all-time favorite books. And that book is called The Mitten. We are gonna read it right now, and then we're going to sing a fun little song about it. So let's get started. This book is a very famous one called The Mitten. Now there are a couple different versions of this story, and you can find at least three at the library, but this one is my favorite. It is adapted and illustrated by Jan Brett. Did you know that Jan Brett puts a hedgehog in every one of her books? That's because hedgehogs are her favorite animal. So if you read another book by Jan Brett, look for the hedgehog. It may be a main character or it may be hiding in some of her drawings. Now, do you think you can find a hedgehog in this book? Let's be on the hunt for a hedgehog. The Mitten, a Ukrainian folktale adapted and illustrated by Jan Brett. Read for you with permission from G.P. Putnam's Sons. Thank you. This book is really cool because of the illustrations. If you look on this side, it will show you what our main character Nikki is up to. And then on this side, it will tell you what's happening next in the story. So pay attention to these mittens when you are looking at the illustrations. Once there was a boy named Nicky who wanted his new mittens made from wool as white as snow. At first, his grandmother Baba did not want to knit white mittens. If you drop one in the snow, she warned, you'll never find it. But Nikki wanted snow white mittens, and finally Baba made them. After she finished, she said, when you come home, first I will look to see if you are safe and sound. But then I will look to see if you have your snow white mittens. So off Nikki went, and it wasn't long until one of his new mittens dropped in the snow and was left behind. What's the problem with white mittens? Oh, look, they blend in with the snow, don't they? It's hard to spot a white mitten against the snow. A mole, tired from tunneling along, discovered the mitten and burrowed inside. It was cozy and warm and just the right size. So he decided to stay. A 
a snowshoe rabbit came hopping by. He stopped for a moment to admire his winter coat. It was then that he saw the mitten, and he wiggled in feet first. The mole didn't think there was room for both of them. But when he saw the rabbit's big kickers, he moved over. Mm, does anybody spot a hedgehog on this page? What do you think is going to happen next? Next, a hedgehog came snuffling along. Having spent the day looking under wet leaves for things to eat, he decided to move into the mitten and warm himself. The mole and the rabbit were bumped and jostled, but not being ones to argue with someone covered with prickles, they made room. What animal do you think is coming next? As soon as the hedgehog disappeared into the mitten, a big owl, attracted by the commotion, swooped down. When he decided to move in also, the mole, the rabbit, and the hedgehog grumbled. But when they saw the owl's glinty talons, they quickly let him in. Talons are these claws on the front of an owl. It's like really sharp nails. Up through the snow appeared a badger. He eyed the mitten and began to climb in. The mole, the rabbit, the hedgehog and the owl were not pleased. There was no room left. But when they saw his diggers, they gave him the thumb. It started snowing, but the animals were snug in the mitten. A waft of warm steam rose in the air, and a fox trotting by stopped to investigate. Just the sight of the cozy mitten made him feel drowsy. Oh, drowsy means sleepy. The fox poked his muzzle in. When the mole, the rabbit, the hedgehog, the owl, and the badger saw his shiny teeth, they gave the fox lots of room. Uh-oh, who's coming next? A great bear lumbered by. He spied the mitten all plumped up. Not being one to be left out in the cold, he began to nose his way in. The animals were packed in as tightly as could be, but what animal would argue with a bear? The mitten swelled and stretched. It was pulled and bulged to many times its size. But Baba's good knitting held fast. Along came a meadow mouse, no bigger than an acorn. She wriggled into the one space left and made herself comfortable on top of the great bear's nose. Hmm, look at Nikki over here. What do you think's happening? The bear, tickled by the mouse's whiskers, gave an enormous sneeze. Ha, 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 the force of the sneeze shot the mitten up into the sky and scattered the animals in all directions. On his way home, Nicky saw a white shape in the distance. It was the lost mitten, silhouetted against the blue sky. What happened to all of the animals? Hmm. As he ran to catch his snow white mitten, he saw Baba's face in the window. First, she looked to see if he was safe and sound. And then she saw that he still had his new mittens. And do you notice something different about these mittens? They don't look alike anymore, do they? Hmm. The end. 
Next, we're going to do something kind of fun and kind of silly to go along with the book, The Mitten. Do you remember what animals went into the mitten? Well, we are going to do a live action version, basically, of the book, where we are going to put some animals into a giant mitten. I made this giant mitten out of a t-shirt that we had here at the library. And so we're going to put our animals in the giant mitten. All right, now since I am not very coordinated, <laughs> I recorded the audio, so the song that we're going to do this to separately. So if you hear singing but you don't see my lips moving, that's why. All right, are you ready to hear our song about the mitten? Let's get started. The mitten's on the ground, the mitten's on the ground. Hi-ho, it's cold outside, the mitten's on the ground. What animal goes first? The mole. The mole burrows in, the mole burrows in. Hi-ho, it's cold outside, the mole burrows in. Which animal is next? It's the rabbit. The rabbit burrows in, the rabbit burrows in. Hi-ho, it's cold outside, the rabbit burrows in. Which animal comes next? It's the hedgehog. The hedgehog burrows in, the hedgehog burrows in. Hi-ho, it's cold outside, the hedgehog burrows in. Which animal comes next? It's the owl. The owl burrows in, the owl burrows in. Hi-ho, it's cold outside, the owl burrows in. Which animal comes next? It's the badger. The badger burrows in, the badger burrows in. Hi-ho, it's cold outside, the badger burrows in. Oh, it's getting stuffed. Which animal comes next? It's the fox. The fox burrows in, the fox burrows in. Hi-ho, it's cold outside, the fox burrows in. Oh no, here's the big one. It's the bear. Do you think there's room? The bear burrows in, the bear burrows in. Hi-ho, it's cold outside, the bear burrows in. And last but not least, our mouse. The mouse burrows in, the mouse burrows in. Hi-ho, it's cold outside, the mouse burrows in. Huh? Ah, ah, choo! <laughs> Isn't that silly? Now, because the bear sneezed, our mitten is all empty. <laughs> this book is a famous folk tale called Three Little Kittens. You may remember hearing it in the movie Despicable Me. But this version is by Paul. Galdon. I always hope I'm pronouncing these names right. <laughs> Three Little Kittens. And it's read for you, with permission, by Houghton Mifflin Harcourt. Three little kittens, they lost their mittens, and they began to cry. Oh, mother dear, we sadly fear our mittens we have lost. What? Lost your mittens, you naughty kittens? Then you shall have no pie. The three little kittens, they found their mittens, and they began to cry. Oh, mother dear, see here, see here, our mittens we have found. What found your mittens, you good little kittens? Then you shall have some pie. Purr, 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 purr. The 
three little kittens put on their mittens and soon ate up the pie. Dear, we greatly fear our mittens we have soiled. What? Soiled your mittens, you naughty kittens? Then they began to sigh. Meow, meow, meow. The three little kittens washed their mittens. and hung them up to dry. Oh, mother dear, look here, look here, our mittens we have washed. What, washed your mittens, you darling kittens? But hush, I smell a rat close by. Smell a rat close by. Meow, meow, meow. <laughs> and that is the book, Three Little Kittens. The end. Okay, for this next part, I'm going to need your help. Can you help me find a snowball? There's a snowball hiding behind one of these mittens. Hmm, do you know which one? I don't know either. That's why I'm going to need your help. Okay, so how many mittens do we have on the board here? Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So we have six mittens to look behind. All right, what color are our mittens? Let's look at the colors. So there's a green mitten, a yellow mitten, an orange mitten, a blue mitten, a red mitten, that's kind of camouflage because this is red too, and a purple mitten. Okay, so I am going to say a little rhyme every time we look at a mitten. Okay, and our rhyme goes like this. Snowball, snowball, cold and round, behind which mitten can you be found? After I say that rhyme, I want you at home to shout out a color. Make sure it's really loud so that I can hear it, okay? All right, so let's try this. Snowball, snowball, cold and round, behind which mitten can you be found? All right, what color? Ooh, good one. I heard somebody say purple. Let's look behind the purple mitten. No snowball behind the purple mitten. Okay, that means we have to keep looking. Snowball, snowball, cold and round. Behind which mitten can you be found? What color should we look behind next? Oh, somebody said orange. Let's try the orange one. Oh, no snowball behind the orange one. That was a good guess. Hmm, let's keep looking. Snowball, snowball, cold and round. Behind which mitten can you be found? What color should we look behind next? Ooh, let's try the red one. Maybe it's camouflage for a reason. Let's try it. No mitten, or no snowball behind our mitten. Okay, we only have three mittens left. Let's see. Snowball, snowball, cold and round. Behind which mitten can you be found? All right, what mitten should we look behind? Ooh, let's try blue. A lot of you said blue. Okay, let's try blue. Nope, no snowball behind there. I thought for sure it was gonna be the blue one. Hmm. Okay, we only have two left, so let's keep looking. Snowball, snowball, cold and round. Behind which mitten can you be found? All right, what color should we look behind this time? Oh, a lot of you said green. Okay, let's try the green one this time. Oh, look at that. I found 
the snowball in the green mitten. We found it. Yay. All right. Congratulations, everyone, for finding the snowball. Story time is almost over. And do you know what that means? That means that it's time for our closing song. Okay, do you remember all of the motions for our closing song? Let's see, follow along with me. See you later, alligator, in a wild crocodile. Give a hug, ladybug, blow a kiss, jellyfish. See you soon, big baboon, out the door, dinosaur. Take care, polar bear, wave goodbye, butterfly. Yay! Thank you everyone for joining me for story time today. But stay tuned because I'm going to show you how to make our craft. Hello everyone, this is Miss Carolyn showing you how to make your craft today. Now you only need a couple things for this craft and three of these four things are already in your story time bag. You should have two white mittens. They're little paper mittens. One white crayon. A white crayon, you think that's pretty silly to put on a white mitten, but you'll find out why. Then you're going to need some paints. These are watercolor paints and they're so much fun to play with. And the last thing you might need to grab from your kitchen. We need a little cup of water and that's to wash our paintbrush off with. Okay, so I'm going to put all of the paint supplies to the side for the moment. So that's the water in our little paint kit. And I am going to use the white crayon first. Okay, now what we're going to do is draw on our mittens with a white crayon. And what's really cool is you can make any sort of shape. So I'm going to make a star and something that kind of looks like a snowflake. We'll see. Oh, look at this. I can't even see what I'm drawing. That makes it kind of fun and <laughs> kind of silly. Okay, what else should I draw? I'm going to draw a heart. There's a heart. Hmm. How about a sun? I'm liking the sunshine today. We haven't seen it in a while. I'll draw a sun. Hmm. And I'm going to draw a triangle just because that sounds really fun. Okay, look at that. I drew all this stuff, but you can't see any of it. Okay, so I made all of these weird and wacky designs, but you can't see it because it's a white crayon. So now comes the magic part. We're going to make all of our drawings appear. Okay, so when you're done drawing with your white marker on your crayons, you can start using your paint. Okay, so we're going to open our paint set up here. And I am going to get the paintbrush out. So there's my paintbrush. And I'm going to dip my paintbrush in a little bit of water. So this helps make our watercolors work. All right, what color should I paint my mittens? Let's see. Well, since you know that snowball is hidden behind the green mitten, I kind of want to do green today. So I'm going to put a lot of water in my green paint right here. And that makes my paint work. And I'm going to paint one of my mittens green. Oh, it needs more water. Lots of water. Lots and lots of it. So what I'm doing is I'm dipping my paintbrush in the water and then putting lots and lots of dots in it. Let's see, does that help? Oh yeah, that looks better. Okay. So I am going to paint. Oh, whoa, remember that star that I drew? Look at that. I'm starting to see a star. It's like magic. It shows up. Look at that, I have a star. Now the harder you press when you're drawing, the better the things that you drew are going to show up. So it's kind of hard to see my star. But we're going to keep painting. And see what other shapes. Do you remember what shapes I drew? I don't remember. Okay. Let's see. <gasps> Wait, is this a giant snowflake? It's looking like a giant snowflake. Hey, hey, there's a snowflake. So that is how you do this craft. You draw something 
And then when you paint over it, it appears like magic. How cool is that? There's my last shape. There's my little triangle. All right. And if you want to keep playing with these paints, you can do whatever colors you want. You can mix and match. I could add a little bit of blue in here if I wanted to. Make them look pretty and as colorful as you want. All right, and that is our craft today. Thank you so much for joining me for virtual story time. We're going to be virtual next month, but starting in April, we will be back to in person. And I'm so excited to see all of your faces again. All right, until next time, 